What choice will you make? What path will you choose? Will you choose the Ashab al Yameen, the path of those on the right, or will you choose the Ashab al Shimal, the path of those on the left? Will you be from the sons of the dunya that give preference to the dunya over the akhirah? Oh my young friend, will you be the sons of the akhirah? You give preference to Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you give preference to the real life over this life. Simple question, what path will you choose? Let me help you today by relating to you the consequence of one that gives preference to this life and lives a life of neglect, rejecting the teachings of Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi and whining and dining. One that gives preference to the dunya over the akhirah. Let me just relate to you very briefly today the surprises that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has in store for him. Sayyidina Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the third Khalif of Islam. When he would stand next to a grave, tears would begin to flow from his eyes. That the blessed beard of Sayyidina Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala would become wet. And the people would say to Usman Ghani, O oh Usman, the mention of Jannat and Jahannam is made. Yet you don't cry when the mention of the grave is made. O oh Usman, you cry so much, so much that your blessed beard becomes wet. Sayyidina Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala responded, Ke o Muslimano, I've heard Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, the grave is the first stage of the stages of the hereafter of the akhirah. Whoever succeeds at the stage of the grave, he will find that every stage that is coming thereafter will be easy for him. The plane of resurrection will be more easier than the grave. And every stage that comes thereafter will become easy and easy and easy till he will enter paradise. But if he doesn't succeed at this stage inside the grave, when the angels Munkar and Nakir and come and pose the question, Man Rabbuk Ma Dinuk, Man Rajul, he will find that every stage that is to come thereafter, the plane of resurrection, the accountability, and then Jannan, Jahannam, he will find that every stage thereafter will be zillions and zillions of times more difficult. This is why I say, my young friends, you know, if you want to believe, then you believe. If you don't want to believe, if you don't want to believe in Allah and His Rasul, if you don't want to believe in the Akhirah, then my friends, the choice is yours. Don't believe. Allah says, nobody will be forced to accept, embrace Islam. You want to believe, you believe. You don't want to believe, don't believe. You want to give preference, to the dunya over the akhirah and you want to enjoy this life you know the 50 years that you might get the 60 years that you might get and if you're lucky you get a hundred years you want to enjoy this and you want to give this preference to the eternal bliss in paradise then my friend it's your choice you do this you want to live a life whining and dining you want to live a life pubbing and clubbing you want to live a life chilling and thrilling then my friend you do this well, let me tell you, you know what? The last laugh will be with none other than the Lord of the Arshan Kursi. Because Rasulullah wasallam said, You do as you please, but remember, you will die just like you lived. And you will be resurrected on the day of judgment, just like you died. You will die just like you lived. You know, if you've lived whining and dining, chilling and thrilling, and giving preference to the dunya over the akhirah, and then you think, in your little mind, that on the point of death, you will utter the kalima la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, or you will die reciting dhikr, or sending salutations on Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or you will die in the state of prostration. Then my friend, people like you and me are living in cuckoo land. Just as it is hoped, 
That one who pleases Allah and his Rasul, and suppresses his desires, and gives preference to the Akhirah over the dunya, Allah will honor him at the time of death. It's so possible that Allah takes out his soul when he's in the state of prostration, when he's woken up during the night, and his hands are raised before his master, and he's begging for Allah's mercy. Oh my friends, Allah takes his soul while he's sitting in the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, before the rawdha, offering salams to Rasulullah or he's in the masjid haram in the stair of a haram making tawaf around the house of Allah just as it is hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will honor that individual who gives preference to the akhirah over the dunya it is feared one who gives preference to the dunya over the akhirah and rejects the teachings of Allah and his rasul and neglects his obligation to Allah and Rasulullah my friends it is feared that Allah will disgrace him at the time of death Allah will disgrace him at the time of death. And if Allah disgraces him at the time of death, then you tell me, what do you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in store for him? Thereafter, in the grave, day of judgment, and Jahannam. Sayyidina Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when occasion was traveling, he decides to stop with an old woman in her house. All of a sudden, there's a grave nearby, and at night, he can hear a voice coming from the grave. The voice is crying, drops of urine. Which drops of urine? Water bag of leather. Which water bag of leather? Sayyidina Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu is shocked. He asked the old woman with regards to this voice, who is this individual? She explains, this was her husband. He was negligent with regards to drops of urine at the time of making istanja. He wouldn't listen. She would tell him not to be negligent. She would tell him to be cautious, but he wouldn't pay heed. She says from the day he has died, he's been saying these words and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inside his grave is punishing him with regards to the sin that he would commit in the dunya and which he took very lightly. She explained to one occasion, a man dying of thirst came knocking our door begging for some water. So he pointed to a, a water bag of leather. He was taking the mick. So he pointed to a, a water bag of leather saying that this water bag is full of water. Take it, drink it. So this person, when he took the water bag of leather and realizing there was no water, he collapsed on the spot and he died. She says, from that day onwards, when he died, every night, this is what I hear from the grave. He's crying inside the grave, and this is what we hear. Drops of urine, which drops of urine? Water bag of leather, which water bag of leather? Sayyidina Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu ta'ala, when he related, returned to Madinah al Munawwara, and he related this to our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is when Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbade the Sahaba from traveling alone. Rabi ibn Shabra ibn Ma'bad al-Juhni was from amongst the awliyaullah of Basra. He relates this, he says, in Sham, I was present on one occasion at the time of death of a believer. And he says the people were doing talqeen. They were telling him to read the kalima, la ilaha illallah. Whoever last words are the kalima, la ilaha illallah, be sure that this individual will enter paradise. So this dying believer, they're making talqeen. They're encouraging him. If before him, they're reciting the kalima, la ilaha illallah. Maybe he will follow them in their footsteps. My friends, dying moments, and he's telling, he's telling all those people around him, he's saying to them to have a drink, take some alcohol, have a glass of wine. And he's saying to them, give me a glass of wine to drink. He spent his life like this, time of death. What he was used to, like Rasulullah said, you will die just like you lived and you will be resurrected on the day of judgment just like you died. And on his deathbed, he's asking for intoxicants. How many young guys, my young friends that I know personally, from amongst the believers that have died, you know, in which condition, had a good night out, we ain't even got to our peak. You just can't die. Why? People don't die when they're age of 18. That's so, that's nonsense. That's silly. You know, it just doesn't happen. It doesn't happen to young guys. But how many from our youngsters, my young friends, have had a good night out? They buzz out of their heads on seventh heaven after having taken an intox, a tablet or two. And before you know it, his heart's popped and he's gone. In the state of intoxication. You know what? He was thinking, 
that the angel is going to ring him and make an appointment. And when he agrees, that's when his soul will go. How foolish. How foolish. The thought doesn't even cross our minds that we're going to go. Simple question, what path will you choose?